We are back at it for the Open Source Yacht Project. If you're just joining, there is a playlist that showed how we set everything up from internet to the Raspberry Pi to the base software and to the initial configuration. Today in part five, we're gonna explore other dashboarding solutions. We last looked at KIP, which is on screen right now. Today we're gonna to look at Grafana using an Influx DB and start to compare and uh, look at some different options. So to start working with Grafana, we need to install a database for it, and we're going to use InfluxDB. Under OpenPlotter, we can go to Dashboards, and we have several options there. We need to install InfluxDB before we install Grafana. So we're going to go through that, sped it up a little bit, and we're done. So once InfluxDB successfully installs, we're going to do the same thing with Grafana from the dashboards panel. Go through the process. It takes about a minute or so. I'll speed it up here as well. Um, just watch for the messages that say success. So you can always get to InfluxDB or Grafana through the dashboards panel by selecting it and clicking open. Uh, once I normally do that, I will note the port that it's on and I'll add it to my bookmarks bar so I only have to do it once. When we launch both apps for the first time, we have to create credentials. So I like to save those in my browser since it's all on a local network. We're now in Grafana. We're gonna do the same thing for InfluxDB. There's a number of things you're creating while you're doing this, usernames, organization names, bucket names, so just make note of all of those things. Many of them can be the same if you want, but you may have reasons to create different ones if you need to. So note that on my first attempt to create a connection between Grafana and Influx, I had an invalid URL message. I actually spent quite a lot of time on this. What you need to know is InfluxDB uses a different language called Flux, and you will need an API token created in InfluxDB first and foremost. Once you have that, copy it, save it to a local file somewhere. And here's the critical step. You want to select Flux as your query language if you're on InfluxDB2. You'll notice that it changes the credential options and exposes an API token area for you to use. This is where I spent so much time figuring it out. And once I did this, it immediately connected. One more important step is you need to put the URL in. It appears to be defaulted in there, but you actually need to retype it. And on save, it connects. That took quite a while, I condensed it. But remember, flux, enter the URL, enter the API token. So with everything installed correctly, we now need to send data from SignalK to InfluxDB. So we're gonna to go to the App Store to Plugins and we're gonna search for InfluxDB. And we're going to install the SignalK to Influx2 plugin. Once installed, we go to Plugin Config. You may need to restart to see the plugin appear. Go ahead and restart Signal K, and once it reloads, you can expand the plugin configuration section. So, after restart under server plugin config, you should see it in your list, and you will notice it's disabled. You can expand it and you can begin uh, configuring it. So this is where you need those credentials you entered earlier, the token that you made, the organization, and the bucket, and we'll leave everything else defaulted at this point. 
in the future we'll probably ignore certain paths ignore certain sources it's just going to prevent an overload of data going into influx so we'll, we'll just send the data that we need into influx in the future but for now we're going to leave everything the same once we save you'll notice the plugin no longer shows disabled we can review what we entered here and we look good Let's build our first dashboard. So with everything configured now, we can step into Grafana and go to dashboards and add visualization. And we select our data source, which is the bucket we created earlier. So let's begin by building our first panel. We're gonna use a stat gauge first. And I just wanna display alternator voltage. So we'll get that set up. Then we're gonna jump over to InfluxDB. And I wanted to show you a really critical step. Turn on Old Data Explorer. So Old Data Explorer for me, I don't understand the Flux language, but I do understand SQL. And so you can notice from left to right how it looks more like a table and field structure. So I use the Query Builder by simply pointing and clicking and selecting. I can see in the raw data it's got what I need, and I paste it into Grafana. Before I found out this step, honestly, I almost gave up with Flux because it's not a language I understand. It's not a language I wanted to learn. But for me, Old Data Explorer made a lot more sense. Now, as you know, I'm collecting data in InfluxDB from Signal K, but with my time series here, I noticed I wasn't getting data recently. So that's something I'm gonna need to look at. But what I do like about this stat gauge is not only does it show the voltage, but it shows a trend history right below it if you want to turn that on. Now let's do the same thing, but use an actual gauge. So this will look more like an analog gauge. We're going to save it. And then again, I wasn't getting data, so I switched back. So I'll need to look at that later, but now I'm getting my 13 volts, which I know is accurate because I can see it in signal K. What I do like about Grafana over KIP is you can set thresholds. So first I'm gonna do is set a min and max. So the gauge has a minimum and a maximum it wants to show. Then I'm gonna play with these thresholds. And this is what I really like. So I wanna do three thresholds. Yellow if it falls below 12 volts and red if it goes above 14 and let's say a half volts or so, or maybe 17. So when I refresh this and select red, you'll notice that I'm showing green for my voltage, but I've got a minimum and a maximum. So if it, if it enters the red range, the whole graph would shift to red. So kind of like this a lot. Next, I want to build a panel for rudder angle. So again, I know what the um, path is in signal K, so I'm able to look for that, search for it. I see it in the raw data. I grab the query. So again, I paste it in. Um, I noticed that most of the time I had to click save to have it actually render data in the first place. So let's give it a name. And once again, I needed to select something, a range that gave me some data. And we're gonna use a bar chart for this and I'm gonna shift it horizontally. And I know my maximum and minimum range because I've seen it in signal K and negative 0.79 is one side and a positive 0.79 is the other side. So I can enter those in and at least put some boundaries to it uh, and just kind of playing around. I mean, this is just a, 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 a dashboard gauge. So it obviously is not an actual rudder gauge, but this shows me as I play with colors, um, I'd love for it to show me starboard is red and port is green, but let's just take it to white. And this tells me that I'm actually steering, I believe in this case to starboard, um, I could actually interpret the data and say that the negative uh, point four means something. So comparing it to what we already did in KIP and Signal K, let's see first of all what our other data sources are through the data browser. So let's grab one more easy one. I do see in navigation position, I can get my latitude and longitude. Um, and so there are two field values in there. I'm probably not doing some of this right. You guys can tell me. But again, I tend to look at the instruction manual after I need something uh, after tinkering with it. But I grab my query. This should pick up latitude and longitude. And I'm going to build another stat panel. 
So paste the data in, call it position. And oddly, it shows just the latitude. But watch what happens when I copy it. I don't know if this is a bug or not, but actually when I duplicated it, it showed both latitude and longitude. So I'm just going to delete the first one. Um, I'll look into that further if I want to use Grafana. Um, and then maybe one more thing we could do would be to grab uh, the port exhaust temperature just because we have it in signal K. So we can build one more gauge panel and we can just quickly drop it in, give it a name. And save and again, having to play with my data too much here in terms of timestamps. That's something I would have to look into. I'm assuming that's how Signal K and when Signal K is pushing specific data to uh, InfluxDB. It's probably not the fault of Grafana or InfluxDB. Comparing what we did before, I will say Kip has some built-in things like the compass you saw that would not be available here. But I do think Grafana is probably a more attractive user interface. All right, so what do I think so far? I think Grafana has a more attractive user interface. Grafana uses InfluxDB, which is recording data in a time-based database. Kip is connecting to it live. I actually see advantages to both of those things. If you noticed, as I was building things, I was getting some no data alerts, and so that means there was nothing in the database. But as I looked at it on Signal K, I was seeing live data. So something's wrong there. Um, obviously, data wasn't getting in the database, but is that another point of failure? I think most of the data I care about would be live data, not necessarily historical trend-based data. So I want to play with it more. Um, I think the thresholding on things is really interesting with Grafana. It does have an alert system that is built into the application. So I think that KIP is probably easier to use out of the box. Grafana and certainly InfluxDB was a lot harder to set up and learn, including a whole new query language, which I've never seen before. Luckily, we could go back and, and grab it, though, through more of a SQL-like interface of fields and tables and those things. Next time, we're going to try Node-RED as a um, automation solution and Node-RED as a dashboarding solution. Stay tuned.